Chapter 24. Make Room Mama Managing. I thought we would take this opportunity to make you all, dear listeners, aware of a terrible illness that can befall your parents when you yourself have children. Let this serve as a warning, if you will, for later on in your parental life. A warning for parents, in-laws, grandparents, aunts, uncles, who may or may not fall victim to the incurable, many have tried to cure it, illness of the wearing of rose-tinted glasses. Unfortunately for us, my mother, Sandra, known as Mama to all of her grandchildren, has suffered terribly with rose-tinted glasses syndrome for over ten years now. It started when my older sister had her first son and it's gradually got worse and worse with each grandchild. Now, I must add here that I love my mother to death. She is an incredible mama to her four grandsons, but unfortunately for us, her long-suffering children, these glasses mean business and her viewing of the past through them is constant and relentless. The main symptom of rose-tinted glasses is misremembering vital details of your children's childhood and looking back on the time very differently from all your children who were also there and can attest to. Your mother will have you believing that you and your siblings were angels sent from heaven who never misbehaved and slept like 20-year-old Labradors. If you're unlucky like me, it can start to rear its ugly head during your actual pregnancy. But usually, and in milder cases, it doesn't properly develop until the four to five day old mark. That's when it really kicks in. It starts as standard bits of passive-aggressive advice, then moves on to backing up these bits of advice with flat-out lies from the past. Should he be wearing that many layers, Rosie? It's boiling out a day. He looks freezing, Rosie. Look at his lips. Look, look, the blue. Here, put this blanket round him. You should have extra blankets, you know, at all times. I never left the house without an extra blanket for you three. Oh, Rosie, it's boiling. Take his hat off, man. Let his skin get some vitamin D. Poor Bane's going to have a deficiency. I always made sure that you got 15 minutes of sun every day. That was Sandra Winter's greatest hit circa 2014. 15 minutes of sun every day in the north of England. How? Did we have a sunbed I wasn't aware of, Mother? This was all in one day, might I add. Exhausting. You can't win. You literally cannot win. You are brand new to this parenting malarkey, and she's done it three times already. And you were one of them. You're okay. You turned out all right. Right? Everything she's saying must be true. Why would she suggest it otherwise? Nobody else is offering advice, so I'd better do everything she says. I just wish she didn't say so flippin' much. Here are some other examples of how the rose-tinted glasses syndrome might present itself from your own mother. Snacks weren't a thing when you were little. You got three square meals a day and that was it. Cakes and sweets off her birthdays, Rosie, not random Tuesday afternoons. Sandra Winter, 2015 It's funny that, ma'am, because I can guarantee you that I could go into the loft right now and get out the big box of old photos and find about 20 of them in which one of us has eaten a bag of crisps or a biscuit. Not at mealtime, might I add, but as a snack. Oh, have you got the telly on for him again, have you? Wow, really, Sandra? See, this is the one that always flows as the most, because I have it on good authority, from me dad, that I used to sit in front of the telly with a bowl of chips. Made in the deep fat fryer. How unhealthy, Sandra, eh? No wonder we didn't get any snacks. You were too busy clogging up with innocent little arteries with delicious lordy goodness. I did bloody love those chips, mind, I have to say that. My dad told me that I'd eat my chips while watching the Care Bears on loop, just episode after episode, rotten me little brain. Rosie, there's loads of stuff you don't need on these windowsills. Why don't you put it all away? The bane's trying to climb up and get it, man. Time, ma'am. Not got much time at the minute, you know. You remember, right? When you had three kids running round and the house was upside down? Because it was. I remember. It never bothered us. 
In fact, it was comforting not living in a pristine house. You did a great job. Stop lying to yourself that your house was always spotlessly clean. You three never threw tantrums like this when you were little. See, again, ma'am, funny you say that. Because instantly, I remember, and quite vividly actually, the day my little brother Kevin split the back of me head open by whacking his full force with a metal door handle he found on the bathroom windowsill in your bathroom. Hmm, so strange. Oh, if only you'd taken your rose-tinted advice then, put stuff away in its rightful place. <laughs> Might have saved yourself an afternoon in Shields A&A, &A, eh? You shouldn't give in to the demand so much. Let them cry it out. I once demanded that you let me empty my wardrobe to put a table and chair in there so I could pretend I had my own office room. I remember you saying to Dad that you didn't care as long as I was out your hair for a few hours. Now, you need to realise I'm saying this very much in jest. Well, sort of, but you'll be reading this so I best be careful. Love you, ma'am. But I just felt that if you're reading this and you have a baby on the way, you can at least be prepared for it, as it will happen. Mothers can't help themselves. The shocking thing is that I fully intend to do the same when my children are older. In fact, I think it's a rite of passage we just have to endure. The one thing you mustn't do is retaliate. Oh, they don't like that. No, 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 no. They don't like that at all. I've tried and failed miserably. But annoyingly, I know all this advice always comes from a place of love and care. Most importantly, though, you must try your very best to never, ever piss off or fall out with your parents or your in-laws. Not only is it an absolute ball ache emotionally, but it will most definitely impact your childcare. That's right. Unless you are lucky enough to have a living nanny, the dream, or extremely lovely family and friends who will happily look after your children on the regs, you can't be jeopardising that sort of help. If you want to be drinking a Malbec with your best friends in your favourite pub, then I strongly suggest you just smile and nod. Say it with me now. Smile and nod. Can I just take this opportunity to say that I absolutely love Sandra and I thank her daily for the help and support that she gives us. She looks after Robin, she cleans our house and sometimes she even does our washing. So, smile and nod is now what I'll be saying to you. Rosie, every time you and your mum start having a massive row and she ends up leaving the house in a huff because, let's not lie here, you two love a row. The arguments never last long and they're always best mates again after, but the problem is Rosie and Sandra are two alike. They are almost the same person, so they sometimes rub each other up the wrong way. I happen to be a massive fan of the rose-tinted glasses syndrome that Sandra suffers from, as it has a by-product that she is called Side with Chris over Rosie in almost every argument itis. For years... I've listened to people slag off their mother-in-laws. It's a well-trodden area in stand-up comedy. I couldn't believe my luck when I got landed with Sandra. She will literally fight my corner against Rosie like I'm her own son. It's amazing. It annoys Rosie and I win the argument. Jackpot. If I was a rapper, Sandra would be that other rapper on stage with me who just shouts, yeah, after everything I say. She's me in-house hype man. My mum and dad are obviously great too, and I have to thank them for the support that we get from them as grandparents. Not sure if they'll ever read this though, so I could go full out and slag them off. But then again, they get enough of that in me stand-up. They don't really suffer from rose-tinted glasses in the same way that Rosie's mum does. They do have that weird thing of claiming I didn't misbehave as much as I did, or just flat out denying something that I tell them I remember so clearly. Maybe they've just got shit memories, who knows. What both sets of parents, and most people of that generation I know, definitely do, is claim that they never watch TV during the day. Yet, whenever I go to either of their houses, the TV is constantly on, playing old episodes of Tipping Point or The Chase. And when I walk in, they always loudly state, I've just this second popped the TV on, I never have it on during the day. Well, you just happen to have popped it on every single time I come round during the day. I'm starting to think you pop it on when you wake up and then pop it off when you go to sleep. Why are you lying about it? Who gives a shit if you watch TV during the day? They honestly react the way I used to react when my parents would come into my room and catch us looking at photos of naked women on my first ever PC. I just opened it up. I didn't know what it was. My mate sent us it, honest. 
You're retired. Do whatever you want during the day. We have Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, millions of channels. Watch away. When I'm retired, I shudder to imagine the amount of shit that'll be to watch. I'd be surprised if I even see me grandkids. But no, my mum and dad really bring out the rose-tinted glasses when it comes to me childhood. In fact, pop to their house for a cuppa and they'll happily regale you with tale after tale of times I was almost accidentally killed or maimed by them as a child. They love it. Here's the highlights. They regularly left the toddler gate at the top of the stairs open, yet kept the bottom one closed, even when I was upstairs, meaning that on the one occasion that I ran across the landing and fell down the stairs, me tumble was broken by a white metal mesh that I almost minced myself through. Me mum once cut a cake with a massive knife that basically resembled a sword and left it right next to me in me high chair while she walked across the kitchen with the cake. She glanced back to see me holding the knife and attempting to lick the cake from it, slash give myself a forked tongue. I was once on me dad's shoulders walking along the promenade on holiday when he spotted a mate of his from work in the same Spanish resort as us. Imagine his excitement. Me dad started shouting, Barry! 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 at the top of his lungs and sprinting towards him, so giddy that he failed to notice the metal sign he was running directly under. The sign hit me full in the face and cleaned me off his shoulders like a WWE wrestler clotheslining someone from the top rope. I fell through the air, about to impact on the pavement below, but my dad managed to make this worse by grabbing me ankle and pulling me leg up. What he in fact did was create a perfect whip crack between my head and the pavement. The noise of the crack, followed by my hysterical screaming, apparently reverberated around the entire beach and promenade for everyone to hear, including the man who looked a bit like, but actually wasn't fucking Barry. Thankfully, we all laugh about these things now, because I turned out fine, and well, you have to really. Robin is currently spending his entire childhood with no front teeth, and not a day goes by when I don't think about how the stories of that are going to haunt us all in later life. Christ. I hope he doesn't do a podcast or a book.